The narcissist and shame. The shame-filled narcissist, the insecure narcissist, how they fear abandonment and their manipulating ways to pass this shame onto those around them to avoid their true feelings and their low self-esteem that they are often unaware of and how we can recover. People can have low self-esteem yet to feel better within themselves go around trying to make others feel happy as they don't want other people to feel how they do as they have the empathy to care about other people giving themselves to others to help other people however most narcissistic people with low self-esteem they go around hurting other people narcissists often feel foolish or shameful in a moment after They've done something towards someone that perhaps they shouldn't have done. But it's more towards what others would think of them and less due to their behaviour being wrong in the first place. They are more ashamed of what people's opinions or reactions might be to their behaviour as they often believe that the other person deserved the narcissist rage or anger or mistreatment. They usually don't feel remorseful for how they made someone feel, only for potential consequences to their actions. They might question why they did something for them, but rarely to never for how it affected the other person. Narcissists are, on the most part, hurt people who go around hurting people. This is not an excuse. And... This is a choice that they make within themselves, often creating further shame. They are shame-based people. Although on the outside, with most, even the vulnerable narcissist, you wouldn't think it, you wouldn't think a narcissist is vulnerable and insecure as they often act grandiose or arrogant or they play the victim to gain the sympathy from other people. Most narcissists don't know within themselves that they are vulnerable or insecure. They just, I suppose, know they are different, but they put that different into the belief that they are special and entitled and above other people. Those of you that have been around toxic, narcissistic people will know all too well they do not handle criticism very well. They even perceive things that aren't even criticism of them as an attack on them. Constructive criticism to offer well-rounded opinions to help them is also something they will take significant offence to and any criticism they will act out in the most hideous and hurtful ways due to their lack in self-awareness. So sometimes you might say something that isn't even about them, but if they perceive that as criticism, they will go on the attack. Negative criticism is to personally attack someone on who they are or what they do to make them to make that person feel shame or feel unworthy is to tell people that they are wrong that the person believes they are wrong they that they believe they cannot do or achieve something and it's to put other people down some people mistakenly do this by trying to be helpful yet phrasing the sentence wrong it's not intentionally done to hurt other people Positive criticism is intended to help someone out, show them a different perspective, a different approach, a different way to handle or look at something, teach them how they could achieve something if they tried a new approach. Just like constructive criticism, it's to help another see the intent or purpose might be better achieved with another approach taking someone's attention onto what alternative they could try to reach their desired outcome deconstructive criticism when someone is to show another that they are not valid to destroy someone else by putting them down threatening intimidating and personal attacks 
the narcissist sees any kind of criticism as a personal attack, as they are either unwilling or unable to see other people's viewpoints. Even good people can accidentally use the wrong approach and unintentionally criticise someone in a negative way. Or when someone has deeply hurt their feelings, when they defend themselves to the very person that's hurt them, they can react in a negative way. But they are often aware of their reactions and aware of their behaviour. And if they've unintentionally criticise somebody and unintentionally hurt someone's feelings, they will often try to make it up to that person. If they've reacted to someone, they will often feel guilty and take ownership of that reaction towards someone. A narcissist most often intentionally, but when it's done intentionally, they will not take ownership of how their actions have hurt somebody else. They will just pass the blame on to the other person. They will not take responsibility for how their reactions have hurt somebody else. They just pass the responsibility on to the other person to try and escape those feelings of shame. As a narcissist feels a sense of unworthiness, they can fear abandonment as they can feel shame for who they are and the things they do, even though they're blaming the other people. Therefore, they create a false self to hide away from their true inner selves, to protect themselves from others seeing those insecurities and those vulnerabilities and that shame and the mistakes that they make in life and who they indeed are as a whole person. As they are most likely shame-based, they often feel unworthy of love, connection and belonging, even if it's on a subconscious level they as they feel unworthy of love and connection they can fear abandonment they might just fear the abandonment on the conscious level so often they can throw the first attack to defend themselves and to make themselves feel better within themselves. They have to pull others down to raise themselves up. They often project their true intentions and behaviour onto those around them by twisting the story and passing all the blame onto those around them through gaslighting with their many manipulative games. They need to feel superior and in control to keep their vulnerabilities hidden from themselves, from others, from society. They can rage, sulk, deny, ignore to gain control of those around them and feel better within themselves. They get a high from the power they have over others when they are gaslighting those around them. They feel powerful and in control, hiding those feelings of shame, covering those insecurities covering those feelings by making those around them feel beneath them. The power they have over others' feelings almost covers for their own feelings. It's like having a cup with holes in. The more we give, the more we try to help them, it'll just keep draining straight back out. Not only does it drain out of them, they drain the light out of those around them to make themselves feel better. We can only fill our own cup up. We can only walk alongside other people and help other people. Those who drain you are not for you. After being around a narcissist, most people question if they are the narcissist. When learning about the disorder, if you have the empathy to care for other people, if you don't exploit others, if you care for the feelings of others, if you don't feel entitled to hurt others, if you don't pass all the blame on responsibility onto other people, if you are aware of your own behaviour, most likely you are not. You've just been intoxicated by the narcissist's negative ways. They kind of send you into that trance. They put you under that spell, that cognitive dissonance. Once out, you have the ability to go within and heal. Narcissistic people so far do not, as they blame all others for their behavior. They do not have the awareness to be able to change. And even if they had the awareness, if they've still got those underlying, if they have the disorder, if they've still got those underlying traits, if they've still got the lack of empathy, if they still feel entitled to exploit people, that is still going to be who they are, even with the level of awareness. 
as a narcissist is often vulnerable to run away from their vulnerabilities and shame, they create that false self that they need to control others to feel superior within themselves. Here are a few ways narcissistic people use shame to feel better about themselves. People make mistakes, so we might have done one of these things within our lives, yet learned to not do it again. A narcissist hits repeat every time. Not all narcissistic people do, but most somatic will try to dress well or dress in designer clothing. However they dress, they might start making suggestions of what you should wear, either subtle ways or obvious ways, the overt and the covert. Sorry, either subtle ways, the covert, or obvious ways, the overt. Some in the beginning might go out and buy you clothing you wouldn't normally wear. They will then make you feel guilty or ungrateful if you don't wear it. So they can start changing your appearance without you even realising they are changing your appearance. Now, some people like designer clothing. Some people like piercings. Some people like tattoos. Some people like simple clothing. Some people like outrageous clothing. Some people take pride in their appearance. Some people are not bothered about what they look like on the outside. Whatever it is, it's down to that individual to feel comfortable in the skin they are in. Narcissistic people, however, if you listen carefully, will put others down on how they look to raise themselves up. A cerebral can and will charm those around them with their intellect to only at some point use this intellect to pull others down. They will not use constructive criticism to help people. They will use negative or deconstructive criticism to pull people down. They don't want to raise people up for that person to do better within themselves. They want to pull people down so that the narcissist can feel better within themselves. Telling other stories or breaking confidence. They can either tell you something that's happened to someone in a way that puts the other person down or makes fun of that person. Or they'll tell people stories about you, sometimes in front of you, putting their own twisted spin on it to make you feel embarrassed or shamed. They can do it so that others might not see what they're doing or so that you fear speaking out. And if you start defending yourself, it can make the situation worse. They aim to humiliate others to feel better within themselves, breaking confidence without permission. You or someone might have told them something in the strictest of confidence, trusting them to value you enough to not disclose that information to other people. The narcissist then knows this is a weakness, an insecurity, a vulnerability of yours, something that you might feel ashamed about. And They love playing on those insecurities and those vulnerabilities of other people. They do this to change people's perceptions of you. They will twist it. They will exaggerate it as they will purposefully add a twist of their own story to divide and conquer, to gain control. Or they might threaten to tell people to make you feel shame and to guilt trip you into doing something that you wouldn't normally do. By projecting their thoughts, feelings, insecurities onto others as they often fear abandonment, they can and they will divide and conquer to isolate people from support. When they've drained the person they've isolated, they will then abandon that person to find someone new to exploit through their many manipulative ways. They will invalidate those around them to cause those feelings of insecurities. They will purposely play a game to provoke feelings within you, such as insecurity, shame, sadness, jealousy. They will then put you down for having those feelings so you feel unworthy. Then they gain more control and feel better about themselves. They will provoke those feelings within you And then to distract you from their behaviour, to distract you from their actions, they will then blame the problem on your feelings and not their behaviour. And yes, we all have to be responsible for our own 
feelings. We all have to retreat. We all have to rethink what our feelings are telling us. And then we have to respond if we need to do so. When we react, it gives our power away. When we respond, we take ownership of our feelings. But the other person needs to take ownership of their actions. If someone is not willing to take ownership for their actions, our only way to teach them how to treat us is by walking away from them. They will sabotage you any way they can as they feel envious when they see others' achievements. They either want to exploit people and take credit for other people's achievements or sabotage people so they don't achieve. They will flatter people, love bomb, idolise people. Then when their actions either create those feelings of insecurity, shame, resentment or jealousy within you. They flip the script and blame you to create those feelings of self-doubt within you. When their envious face comes out, when they are hurting you, as you live the reality when they treated you well with their projection and blame shifting, you then doubt yourself instead of them and what they did wrong. They will gaslight, which is an insidious way a narcissist will deny our reality, our hopes, our dreams, our past, our present, our future, our intentions, our feelings into something they are not. By distorting these often leads us to having that cognitive dissonance and the belief that we are the ones going crazy, which makes it easier for the narcissist to further their manipulation and control, making them feel better about themselves while we slowly lose ourselves. They intimidate us either through obvious threats of telling us what they will do or the covert subtle threats of if you do this but not fully explaining what they do to put that fear into us so that we fawn to their behaviour which makes them more in control of our emotions, of our actions of who we are as a person. Most people have insecurities. People make mistakes and feel shame. Shame and insecurities are a universal emotion. Some people can hurt people because of these feelings. Then we have people who help people, sometimes helping the wrong people, especially when they guilt trip, emotionally blackmail, or use our insecurities, weaknesses, vulnerabilities, shame against us. Shame is a conscious emotion used, usually caused by the feelings of guilt, humiliation, or stress caused by foolish behaviour or wrongdoings. Insecurities are when we are uncertain about ourselves or those around us, when we feel anxious, when we doubt ourselves or those around us. Being aware of our feelings and learning what triggers those feelings helps us develop as a person. To learn and know about ourselves is to develop the conscious awareness not only of the feelings we have within us or we are the feelings we are in within any given moment but what those feelings are telling us. Sometimes we have to give ourselves our own reality check that we need by listening to our feelings and not what other people are telling us. Narcissists have a way of talking to others how they are trying to avoid talking to themselves. All those feelings of insecurities and shame they project, they pass on to those around them. So we can not only end up with our own insecurities and shame, we can end up with the narcissist's insecurities and shame too. By doing things like giving ourselves a reality check, by writing these feelings down, what we did do, what we didn't do, what others did do, what insecurities have others placed within us and what they say about you that isn't true, writing down your feelings, your insecurities and working out what those feelings are trying to tell you, working out whether that is an action that you took to cause that feeling or whether that is an action someone else took against you to cause that feeling. You often give and people please to avoid feelings of shame. 
a narcissist usually attacks to void feelings of shame. But if you give to other people to avoid those feelings of shame, this is when you need to not only give to others, but also stop forgetting about yourself and start giving to yourself, start taking care of yourself, start talking to yourself and start to speak to you how you speak to those you love and care for. If you are speaking to yourself in a way you wouldn't speak to somebody else, writing this out, becoming consciously aware of how you are talking to yourself, writing out if that's how someone has spoken to you in the past and working out what person has put that voice into your mind so that you can take control of how you talk to yourself and learn to, it takes practice, just like anything in life, learning to write takes time, takes practice, learning to walk takes time, take practice, we don't just get it straight away, learning how to talk to ourselves in the right way takes time, it takes practice, the more we put ourselves down, the more we feel down, without other people putting us down, the more we raise ourselves up, when people try to put us down, we will no longer pay as much attention to that person. And so start talking to yourself how you speak to those you love and care for. Reach out to those you can trust or those who have lived similar experiences who can validate your feelings and stop listening to those who invalidate your feelings. I shall add in the description the video to the Narcissist Reality Gap, um, a video to help overcoming emotions, the video to explain cognitive dissonance and a video on healing insecurities after narcissistic abuse. If anyone has any advice on how to overcome shame or insecurities, please add that into the comments. My best advice is listening to your emotions, owning your insecurities, your weaknesses, your vulnerabilities and talking to yourself in the way that you talk to others but there's plenty of different methods it's about finding the method that works for you if you are new to the channel and you do find the information helpful please do subscribe thank you very much for all the returning subscribers today if you're struggling with insecurities and weaknesses and self-doubt today make a conscious effort to write down your thoughts. When those negative thoughts creep in, write down that thought. Start to try and think about whether that's a thought that you've placed within yourself or a thought that someone else has placed within you and start working on how you can change that thought around to work for you, not against you. Thank you very much for listening. I hope everyone has an amazing day. Bye.